Welcome to the Q&A section where we answer your questions about e-commerce and performance. The first question that I hear many times, what's the minimum budget I have to spend to have a good chance to make my course profitable? Excellent question. The number I usually quote is your weekly budget should be 50 times of the number of conversions that you want to get. So what are conversions? In e-commerce, we usually talk about purchases. Let's say you have a cost per acquisition of 10 euro, spending 500 euro single campaign per week is ideal because you can make 50 purchases. But then that's too much money for me. Meaning I am set. How about instead of going for the purchase conversion event, you'd go to the add to cart event. Usually happens like five times more often. Now you only need to get 50 add to carts to do that. In add to cart costs you two to three euro. Or you have to spend only 100 to 150 a week per campaign to make the algorithm happy. This is what I would suggest. In broad strokes, absolute minimum is that you at least have a good chance to make a sale per day. And if you are, yeah, if you're, if you're starting on ground zero, but if you are starting, let's say at a hundred sales, your minimum budget should make at least a 10% difference in your sales. You should at least have a chance to make 10 sales a day. That is how I consider the minimum budgets uh, to get it working. And this rule of the 50 per week simply comes from the machine learning algorithm. And the question was about how to have a good chance. You should give your campaigns a chance to have 50 per week. Next question. After how many days do you know which campaign is worth to scale? If we abide by the 50 conversions per week law, yeah, we have roughly like 10, 15 per day. I usually have a pretty good feeling after like two to three days of the direction that the campaign is going. I usually force myself to, to keep looking at it for a week, but then I should I, I should see a clear direction of whether or not it's worth scaling or not. You can actually set up automated rules for that. You can set up rules in Google and Facebook everywhere where you say, if the return of advertising spent is above your threshold of five, yeah, as I suggested in the title, then increase the ad budget by 10% of that specific campaign. Yeah, and you just let the automated rule manage that. And even if it, it gets worse, then it decreases the budget that lowers the pressure and that makes the ROAS usually time. And then your campaign stays where it's comfortable. Next question. Where do I find relevant audiences to target on Facebook and Instagram? Nice one. So let's head over to the Googles. Um, business manager. This is the place where you, where you can see all of your businesses that you're involved with. Then you head over to the, to the audience insights. And let's say you're on the beauty segment and you are in A and in Germany. So let's try this and let's kick out the, the USA. No offense. Now you can see the normal distribution of people on Facebook, you get an exact 50-50 split between men and women. Most people are 25 to 44, I would say, roughly 50%. Wow, half are married. Who would have thought? I'm too. And now you can see what kind of pages they like. But those is, of course, boring because it's everybody. Let's say you're in the beauty segment targeting women from 18 to 34. You can now see a more... Uh, yeah, nuanced selection of pages and interest groups that, that they are already in. And now you can enter something like the beauty. Let's let, let's go for cooking. You could even go for specific campaigns. Let's say L'Oreal. And now you can see you start with this initial interest group and you, you check what kind of other places are they interested in. Change your country, you can change your age group, the gender, connection to your page, 
usually only if it's big enough. But even thinking about those categories is a huge inf inspiration um, to find new audiences. What kind of jewelry and watches are they interested in? What kind of stores do they go to? What products do they buy? What kind of movies do they like? Oh yeah, here, 50 shades of gray. What kind of cafes are they going to? Like, this is all information that you can use to get inspired to use those interest groups. It's not guaranteed that they are targetable, but the big ones are of course targetable. Like, and, and this is my main place for inspiration. And after you put in any of those interest groups in the ads manager and press on suggest, you get a ton of further questions. Those are my two favorite places in the Facebook Instagram universe. Next question. Um, how shall I differentiate between traffic ads, retargeting ads, follow-up ads? Let me interpret that as like, what's the difference in the ad creative? And yeah, slip in the question about the, the campaign objectives. Now that is going to come in a little bit. So we said that we have Tofu Mofu Bofu campaigns. Traffic campaigns would be like in the Tofu Mofu area, like getting people to the shop, retargeting people who have been to the shop. Follow up is I'm going to purchase. I would focus the higher you are, the, the further away the audience already is, the more you want to go for very engaging ones. Videos, questions quizzes, stuff that moves, that, that gets people to, to actually engage with your ad and, and like and comment. You do not have to focus as much on driving straight conversion directs. But in the retargeting campaigns, you, you can go for it. You can tell them the price, you can sell them detailed product pictures, price comparisons, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that, that is how I would differentiate on the creative. In the follow-up ads after the purchase, you have completely different things. Give me feedback, write me a review, here's a referral code, um, here's a coupon code for your next purchase, and a reminder to refill the product, like contact lenses, that automatically differentiate. I'm gonna talk about the campaign objective in this context with the next question about that. So let's take this one. Campaign objectives in, in our campaign. What, what, what does he mean by that? If you're starting your Facebook or Instagram campaigns, you usually have to say like, okay, what do I want to go for? Do I want to go for awareness, consideration, or conversion? The ones that are more conversion optimized, they need good feedback from your analytics tools. They can cope with broad audiences, like a million or two on Instagram, optimized for people who add something to the shopping cart or purchase something. You want to give it a long leash and let it groove in and, and, and work. Because over time, Facebook and Instagram will give you the people out of the 2 million that have the lowest cost or the best return of advertising spend out of all of those people. And they will target the right people at the right time. It needs some time to optimize. But it will, for example, ignore that this one ad set has cheaper clicks than the other one. It only looks at the lowest cost per acquisition that conversion. This is by far my favorite campaign type. I, I go for conversion campaigns whenever I can, just when I do retargeting of really tight-knit groups, let's say everybody who initiated checkout, but didn't buy, super annoying. I might not want to give Facebook liberty to only select a couple of people. I might want to use the very broad awareness campaigns to be sure that Facebook is retargeting everybody in that audience. You only want to not do the, the conversion objective in that specific case and when you don't have the Facebook pixel installed on your website. So my company doesn't allow the installation of additional pixels beyond Google Analytics, like Facebook Pixel, LinkedIn, etc. What would you do in my situation? Phase one is initialize the process. I talk to data privacy people a lot in companies, explain how it's working. Users have to make an active choice to be tracked before the pixel is firing that we have to, and can be transparent about the practices, the opt-out process and all that kind of thing. 
And then they usually start to understand, oh yeah, this is not just evil juju. People actually made the decision to retract and so start that process. Get to talk to your data privacy and get into the habit of doing that. And do not be satisfied with the we don't do this bullshit. It's it's just a matter of who's pushing harder. The CEO who wants to make money is on your side. He has the entrepreneurial risk and that he might be willing to take because lawyers will always tell him, oh yeah, you don't have, you're not allowed to do anything in that. But he might be willing to take that entrepreneurial risk. So phase one, start that process. Phase two, thank God you have something like FOMO or Google Analytics installed. This gives you already pretty deep insights if you use talked about ask meetups utm track us just google utm google analytics and you will find tools that help you to build urls to your product purchase pages with some additional parameters to it now you can analyze those analytics and you have to do the analysis you have to see oh yeah this campaign is better than that this ad is better than that this audience is better facebook google linkedin are not going to do it for you uh, the the machine learning is not happening because there is no feedback side. but you can take responsibility and you want to then avoid the conversion campaigns and go for the traffic and engagement campaigns and make them work there yes it's inferior but hey that's sometimes what we got to live with we got to make do with uh, what we have right now ad blockers suck what's your current experience how many conversions are lost not tracked got any tips and workarounds to share not only ad blockers suck but cookie consent banners they, they are a much higher percentage of lost of tracked conversions usually i consider 10 percent is lost through ad blockers now that, that that is that has pretty much always been that way it depends a bit on the technical sophistication of your audience my audience with pirate skills most of you are having some kind of ad blocker but let's say you are uh, in the fitness industry less people are likely to use uh, ad blocker it's just an observation so you do not have to worry about the ad blocker so much yes they suck but only for display ads so do other ads do search ads do um i mean ad blocking on facebook and instagram for example is usually not a thing because mobile apps have real hard issues with ads maybe it works better on android with ad blocking than on ios but you have choices there you don't have to do display ads anyway in most cases except like retarget the the harder loss is the cookie consent opt-in rate if you do conscientious cookie filtering um, like the facebook and google ads pixels generates user ids which personal identifiable information then the best i have seen is like an 80 percent opt-in rate in the fit fitness niche like to being tracked to everything i personally i have 67 percent opt-in rate if you are below 50 your cookie consent banner sucks or you have a very special audience like developers who hate this kind of so this is where I would uh, worry. And you just have to have a stable opt-in rate. Like with my 60, 70%, as long as it's stable, I don't care. I can multiply my purchase results by, by the difference. Yeah, but just divide by my 0.7 or 0.67% if I have a 67% opt-in rate. And I know that I got, instead of 100 purchases, yeah, I maybe got 130. I handle it that way and update the reporting in my mind. Can you also convert 1,000 ad spend to 5,000 ad revenue? Yes, but you have to deserve it. You you have to start with a thousand euros, make that work, and then your objective is absolutely to get to the 100 as fast as possible, or as your organization allows. I'm a huge fan of, of scaling as fast as possible or at least as fast as it's it's sustainable yeah for the people with stress level and all that kind of jazz 
but a hundred k if we are not yet talking about like daily budget but this could be a decent monthly budget i mean this is just spending 3k per day for long periods of times absolutely doable any tools for doing this more advanced strategies uh, or do i have to set it all up manually yes there are some tools um if you're on shopify there's a beautiful one called shoelace just google for shoelace and they also have very good content marketing about this whole retargeting journeys and they set a lot up for you you have to provide them with creative but they give you the structure the behavior split the time split and then there are other services like adroll who do it for you this is more popular in the b2b segment so look for tools like alternatives to shoelace in your product category there's a platform called g2.com they do all of those tool comparisons start with shoelace and then maybe develop there is usually a tool for that but those tools usually want a fragment of your ad spend and you might not want to give it to them so start with the manual setup and it's also important to do that start with the 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 best products and the most likely audience make that work expand build the retargeting structures but more more much more importantly the tofu mofu bofu structure remember that retargeting only has the job to make you and your cost per acquisition maybe 10 20 percent better retargeting is never the main driver of your profits just making it more profitable so Keep the focus on the tofu mofu bofu. In e-commerce, the magic is making tofu directly or building the lead gen to direct sale strategy that I talked about. Can you make a video on your streaming setup? Are you streaming from an iPad? Yep, I'm streaming an iPad. You can see it. And I actually made a video about this. You can find it on piratesguild.com. If, if you search, for example, like, Pirate skill video creation. I, I've set up a meetup for this. What you need to build a quick video creation and software guides and the hardware setup. I made pictures. If you end up on those pages at the moment, you have to add a free dot to it. No problem. And this meetup is the one that you want to look at how to create more video content faster. And this is where I explain this. Thanks for the question. If you have already a good e-commerce store running, would you go to Amazon at the moment or any other marketplace? I think it's extremely hard to ignore Amazon. Be very thankful that you have your own store as the baseline and that Amazon is just an option. These days, it usually happens the other way around. They and on Amazon and now they are in their hands and now they're trying to build their own e-commerce. First of all, be thankful for that. And then yes, try other placements. Of course, you have to be able to suck up the, the, the steep 15% fee on Amazon, but it might be absolutely worth it for you. One thing that I observed that was very interesting to me with a client example is whenever we did display campaigns like like social and display campaigns towards the shopify store and the amazon sales would increase because the conversion optimized campaign for the store is doing really nice but what do people do when they see a video and pictures they start googling for like amazon and and you get those sales on the platform where people are more likely to just click the send button but there are disadvantages to it you are not the owner of the customers on amazon you usually don't do not get the email address except you do the lead gen strategies that i talked about before but i, I would definitely do it last question of the day uh, what's the best solution to the attribution problem you have seen Facebook attribution, Google Analytics 360, third party. So uh, what does this guy mean? So attribution is the question, 
when Pinterest, Google, and Facebook all target for the same product to the same audience, it's very likely that they see and even click all three platforms and then buy. Who's gonna get the count for the sale? The, the last click that finally converted, let's say on Google Shopping or something like that? Or isn't it the first ad that inspired people to research Facebook? This is called the attribution problem. Last click, for example, last click. And there are different models that you can use. Linear attribution, where Google Analytics looks at what was the first visit from that user, the second and the third, and it will spread the attributions and give everything, for example, 0.33 in sales. Yeah, so you see pretty odd sales numbers for your channels. But there are also machine learning based models, for example, under Google uh, 360. Uh, yes, Facebook attribution is a good start. It's getting better and better. I'm, I'm keeping a very close look to Facebook attribution, but not really good yet. Attribution is one of the biggest problems in performance marketing, and there is not this solution that I'm looking for. I want to see the conversion path with maybe a pie chart with attribution percentages presented by not only clicks and therefore visits, relatively, also view data information. I haven't seen that. If you find that, please let me know. This is one of my most nerdy interests that I currently have. Well, that's it for today. That was converting 1K ads into 5K revenue. I was actually scared of such a clickbaity title, but I hope you saw that in e-commerce, it's just good business practice, nothing out of the ordinary. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much. I'm checking out. Bye-bye.